Hi everyone, I'm Iverson Lee. So welcome to the second episode of Pathway to Entrepreneurship video series. You know, so if you haven't watched the episode one, I would recommend you to watch it first before you uh, watch this video because the episode one talking about the uh, energy blueprint yeah, of uh, what an entrepreneur uh, flavor are you in, you know, because different entrepreneurs, they have a different mindset, they have different risk tolerance. So uh, that one we already covered in episode one. And in episode one, we're also talking about uh, one very, very important thing here is uh, all the entrepreneurs, uh, a lot of people think about entrepreneurship maybe is something that they need to start their own business. Yeah? But for us, the entrepreneurship or the word entrepreneur simply mean a mindset. Yeah? Even if you're not a business owner, I'm sure this video will benefit you as well because we are talking about how an entrepreneur thinks. Yeah? Whether you're your employee, yeah, you're still working for people or you're professional, you still can think like entrepreneur. Entrepreneur means that someone that, that take their own responsibility for their life and then they take charge and then they design their own destiny. Yeah, that is the spirit of entrepreneur. So in this episode number two, uh, we're going to talk about one topic of this entrepreneurship. Uh, we're talking about universal currency. So I would say that this is one of my favorite topics as well because I'm, since I'm a consultant, I'm a Patsa consultant, I'm a Chiman consultant, I'm a Yijin consultant, so I have the privilege to meet different people from different walks of life, be it uh, business people, business tycoons, CEO, uh, professionals, housewife, you know, students, or some of them are struggling right now. You know, so I, I, tend, I have the uh, opportunity to meet any one of those people here and I discovered that no matter how good you are right now or whether you're struggling, all of us there, they have a way to becoming better. Yeah, so that's, that's the reason I study Pazza and that's why I'm so passionate of learning Pazza. A lot of people might think, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to actually become an astrologer or I, I'm not interested to actually read Destiny for someone. But what if you can just learn a part or pieces of some of that part that you can use to understand yourself better and therefore you can make a better decision to improve your life, right? So this is the goal of this program here. This, uh, this five episodes here, the reason I started this is not because I want to train uh, anyone to become a top master master or achievement master. Yeah, this program here is geared for uh, layman people who are interested to improve their life or take their life to the next level without the need to study all the technical uh, information behind the subject. You know, so and this episode number two here, we're going to talk about, uh, like I mentioned just now, we're talking about universal currency. Because when I meet a lot of people, be it a business people or, uh, or career-minded people, uh, the, the moment they fail on something, or uh, maybe their business on their career, they always say that, uh, am I in the right industry, right? Or maybe they're too young, they're too old, uh, they don't have enough resources, they don't know the right people, you know, they have all these uh, so-called excuses. But in the end, I'll always make them to realize one very important thing is if you're talking about business failure, all business failure, always there will be a failure owner. So in the end, if someone didn't make it in their business or in their career, it's nothing to do with the uh, external environment. It's a lot got to do with uh, the person itself. Uh, let's talk about this. If someone says they don't have connection, we also read a lot of successful story that the immigrants that go into the foreign country with nothing, they have no education, no background, don't know anyone, and yet they can become successful and build their business empire. Yeah, so that's the reason we study Pazza because Pazza talking about your inner self, what is your true talent is. Yeah, so since now we're talking about that part, I think I, all of you here, if you're first time you learn Pazza, I need you to get your Pazza chart ready first. So in this video right now, I'm going to show you the link at below here. These are the link you should uh, visit here and then plot your Pazza chart or what we call the destiny chart. Yeah, because this uh, video here, we're going to talk about how do you read uh, your own parcel chart and derive certain information uh, out for this? So now, once you already plotted the chart right now, I, I will talk about the, the part that what actually prevent uh, people to become successful, be it a business or the career, is I think if you're talking about entrepreneurship or business or even your own professional line, uh, there are two very, very important components that we need to pay attention to. Yeah, it's very simple. The first one is innovation and then the second part is marketing. You know, so this is the two core component that everyone who want to build their own empire need to master. Yeah, so in this session here, I want to talk about innovation. Yeah, what, what do I mean innovation? 
Why is it so important? Because innovation rep uh, represents something that continuously evolving, something keep changing, and something keep improving. Yeah, you can call this progress. Yeah, because think about this: if your business yeah doesn't evolve, yeah you don't have, you don't make any improvement, you don't release new products, you don't def uh, uh, so called create a new strategy, a way to understand your consumer. Yeah, then your business is going to die, right? So we've seen a lot of cases in the business world, no matter how big the company is or used to be very big, and they can be actually just die, yeah, natural death, yeah, by simply because they're no longer innovate. So I think that is very important in our life. If you are not a business owner, if you are working for people, don't you think that we also continuously need to improve ourselves? Right. If you're not evolving, you're not adding more new value, if you are not actually uh, learn new skill to do more, then some sooner or later you become irrelevant yeah, in the marketplace. Yeah, and a lot of people think it's the wrong industry. Actually, it's not. Yeah, the reason we have faced a lot of problems, be it business or career, because you are no longer valuable. Yeah, that's why since it's so important, that's why I specifically choose episode number two talking about this part, innovation. Yeah, but the best part here is, this innovation element can be seen in your butter chart, right? So are you ready? Yeah, so if you're ready right now, I'm going to teach you how do you look for this innovation element. Yeah, this is very, very important because this represents growth. This represents evolution. Yeah, I, whether you evolve or not, these are the elements you're looking for. Yeah, so for some of you are very new to butter. Yeah, this is the first time you're reading this. Yeah, so uh, right now, I'm going to show you on the screen right now. Uh, how is a butter chart looks like? Yeah, so yeah, so this is how it looks like here. And then in this session here, we are only focusing on the nature chart. Yeah, the nature chart. The nature chart is the top one. These are the because the nature chart talking about who you are, your talent, and your strength. So how about the rest of the information? For now, we leave it aside. And whenever the times come, we have more knowledge about butter, we can talk about timing, we can talk about opportunity, we can talk about normal people. Well, we leave it for uh, some other episodes. But for now, we're just focusing on the later chart. Yeah, so for those people who are very new to butter, your butter chart only contains five pieces of information, or what we call five elements. Five elements, uh, which uh, means or read as fire, water, wood, earth, and metal. Yeah, so these are the elements as is clearly indicated on your chart. So whenever we're talking about innovation, we are looking at one very, very important element. Among these five elements, one of the elements govern growth, govern progress, govern innovation is the wood element. Yeah, wood element represents innovation, or you can call this growth or progress. Yeah, why, why we use wood represent innovation? or ever-changing is because among the five elements, woods is the only element that continuously to grow, right? Think about this. Yeah, fire doesn't grow by itself. Yeah, the earth doesn't grow by itself. Yeah, the water, yeah, is a, it doesn't grow by itself. The matter it doesn't grow by itself. But the only element that continuously to grow, yeah, non-stop, is the wood element. So that's why wood element represent ever-growing, represent change, represent innovation, represent progress. Right, so this element is extremely, extremely important. So if you look at your own chart right now, can you spot any wood element in the chart or not? Yeah, now you need to check. Yeah, if you able, how do you know whether a wood element or not? So on the nature chart, you need to look at what you need to look at the. Uh, we actually indicated our, our English word there. It says wood. Yeah, all you need to do is just to trace the uh, the word wood there. If you discover the uh, the word wood there, which means that the wood element is present in the chart. Yeah, so another quick way for you to do this is, I already, on the screen, is uh, we already uh, show you right now the two elements that represent the wood. Yeah, the first one is the yang wood, and then the second one is the yin wood. Yeah, regardless whether it's yang or yin, it's still a wood element. Yeah, there are no difference here in terms of innovation uh, meaning. So, I, you only need to have either one of this. Yeah? You, you don't need to have both of this. But if you can check your chart right now, if you have any of this element, or what we call the wood element in the chart, which means that your chart got wood element. Check now. See whether you have this wood element in your chart or not. Yeah? So I think some of you discover you have one, some of you have two, some of you have a combination of yang wood and yin wood. But 
some of you also don't have any, right? Yeah, you know, then you might get worried, right? I doom, yeah, you know, we have a bad destiny. So yeah, bear with me. I'm gonna to explain to you, uh, attend all of these possible scenario here. So now let's talk about the wood element first. Yeah. So if you're if you have wood element in the chart, yeah, there are you might have yang wood or yin wood. Yeah. So if you have wood element basically means that you can adapt to change. Yeah, you're willing to uh, actually improve yourself. Yeah, so you welcome change. You are more uh, susceptible and you are okay with change. Yeah, you like to improve yourself. Life improvement makes you happy. So this is uh, your own DNA nature. But your, your chart here, you have two, right? You have a uh, yang wood or yin wood. So what does it mean? Yeah, since right now we're talking about innovation, now we only focus on wood on innovation because wood can represent so many things. It could represent vitality, it could represent uh, health as well, re represent other things. But right now we're just focusing on innovation. So the moment we look at these two, yang wood and yin wood, although both also represent innovation, but there are slightly difference between these two. Yeah, if we're talking about uh, innovation, uh, whatever industry you're in, there are two types of innovation. The first part, we are talking about disruptive innovation. And then the second type of innovation is what we call sustaining innovation. You know, so which one are you? Yeah, you don't know, right? So uh, let me tell you, if your chart has yang wood, then you're more inclined to sustaining innovation. And then if you are yin wood, you are more aligned to disruptive innovation. So what is the difference? Yeah, what is the difference between sustaining and destructive innovation? Yeah, so let me tell you more about this. So if you're talking about destructive, means that the innovation that you're, you're able to actually develop or release to the market is something that can disrupt the whole industry. Yeah, for example, let's, let's talk about Airbnb, right? So that solution actually can change the way how the tourism works. Yeah, how the whole in hotel industry works. Don't you think it disrupts the whole thing here? And for example, like Uber, right, or GrabCar, yeah, so this is uh, the whenever that actually you will change the whole uh, taxi industry as well. That one is disruptive because it removed the existing business and rendered the existing business model irrelevant. That's why we call disruptive innovation. So if your chart have a lot of yin wood, then basically means that the way you innovate a lot got to do with disrupt something. Yeah, you're, because you're very flexible, you want to change the way how the industry being played. These are the elements that you need. Yeah, so how about the second one? The second one is what we talk about uh, uh, sustaining information, uh, innovation. Basically means that these are the way of innovate to make things better. Yeah, maybe you make a, a faster car, a better camera, a better hard disk storage. So it's incremental. That's why we call sustaining uh, innovation. It, it's not bad, you know, because a lot of companies that actually are focusing on sustaining innovation can grow really uh, fast as well. For example, like you look at Amazon, right? Amazon might not be known as the, the most innovative company, but yet, yeah, due to their consistent effort to improve their channel, their distribution channel, their service, you know, their coverage, and now yeah, they become one of the most valuable company in the world. Yeah, so they're not doing something totally different to wipe off the industry, but yet they improve every single day yeah, to becoming better. That's why we call sustaining innovation. So if you chart a lot of yang wood, like this, then you're, you're more susceptible to sustaining innovation. Yeah, once you know your own nature and your own uh, talent on this, you can position yourself better when you run a business. And this information also useful when you're going to hiring your marketing team, you know, and someone that you need them to think about a new idea, you know, or new products or services, but understand their nature in their chart. Now you can tell who is the best fit for the job. Now going to the last part, is those people then don't have any wood element. Then what does it mean? Does it mean that uh, you'll be doomed yeah, to be a failure for the rest of your life? Of course no, right? Because since wood represents progress, represents change, if you don't have wood element, maybe change is not important to you. You only change when you need it to. Yeah, for example, like you discuss, uh, uh, maybe your, your, your doctor tells you that if you don't lose weight right now, you will you die tomorrow, right? Then suddenly you're scared. Yeah, you, you, you have the pain, then only you change, right? So these are the part that, because your chart here do have wood element, so in order to initiate change in you, you need pain, you need extreme pain, and most of the time it's from external pain. Yeah, so if you don't have any wood element, if you want to improve yourself, want to change yourself, I'll suggest you to get a coach, right? A coach that actually can hold you accountable for every day. They're going to call you every single morning to wake up, you know, or go to a job 
or whatever it is, you know, be, make sure you uh, keep all your promises. So you need someone to help you. It could be not necessarily a coach. It could be your buddy, right? Or maybe your friend that help you accountable. Yeah, so this is one of the way you aware uh, what, what our shortcoming that you have, then you take action to solve it. Yeah, so this is very important. Yeah, so I hope you enjoy this session right now. And before we end this session, let me uh, tell you uh, one uh, bonus information here. Right, so a lot of people talking about happiness. Yeah, no matter what you want in life, you want a big car, you want to achieve success in your career, no matter what you want, yeah, in the end, you believe that the moment you get those things, you become happy. Right? So no matter what you want in the end, you just want to achieve the ultimate feeling, happiness. Right? So how do you actually achieve this? Yeah, so uh, one very important word uh, or, or insights that I uh, realized that if you want to be happy, you need to uh, make improvement every single day because if there are no progress, there are no happiness. Yeah, so how do you make progress? Yeah, just dedicate like five or maybe half an hour to one hour every day, learn a new skill, uh, read a new books. That one uh, thing about this, if you just spend one hour reading a book every single day, think about how far you grow in the next three months if you continuously to do this every single day. Yeah, that's why uh, uh, the keyword here is, or if you uh, the key takeaway from this session here is, if you no grow, then there will be no happiness. Yeah, because uh, if you relate back to Chinese metaphysics, happiness are represented by fire element, right? So fire element is the is the is the thing here. So if you're uh, if you're hap if you want more happiness, what you should do? So from Chinese meta metaphysics perspective, the wood will grow the fire, right? So if you want more happiness, which is the fire element, so what do you need? You need more wood to produce more fire. So since wood represents progress, don't you agree that the more progress you make, you'll be more happy? So I hope that after watching this video, I think you need to make one very important decision today that you decide to improve yourself and spend 30 minutes to one hour to read something new, to do something new every single day. And I'm sure that your destiny will change. All right, thank you for spending your precious time watching this video. And uh, on the... Episode number three, yeah, which going to release uh, shortly. Yeah, so uh, stay tuned to our channel here. Then, and, and episode number three, we're going to talk about something very, very special. We're going to talk about your financial destiny. Right? That's the most popular topic ever. All right, so I see you then. Thank you.